Welcome to Steve 87th, Puget Sound and Pacific Railroad. Hi everyone, this is Steve, Steve 87th, PSAP Railroad, or Puget Sound and Pacific. Um, this is my channel and I just wanted to invite you guys to, to come along and watch as I build my railroad, uh, build up some kits, do some uh, kit bashing, um, and running trains like the one behind me. So if this is what you guys like to watch, uh, stick around for a while and uh, see if you like the channel. Hey everyone, Steve87 here today. So in my last video, I told you I was going to show you how to build one of these conveyor belts on top of the grain elevators. So that's what we're going to do today. So in the next however long it takes for us to do this, probably a half hour or so, I'm going to show you the steps, give you the information on what I use to get all of this done, and show you how I actually built it along with the tools and the supplies that you'd need to do this. So let's take a look at, um, we've already seen how this kind of works. We've got handrails, we've got walkways, we've got the actual conveyor in the middle here, we've got some control valves, we've got some areas um, of little detail such as the motor and the, uh, the turn ends and all that. So let's go ahead and start and we'll show you the tools, all of the items that I used to build this, and then what I needed to actually do to make this all happen. Okay, so let's get on with the video. All right, now that we know what we're doing, let's start off with some of the tools that we're going to need to do this with. So first off, we have our normal player of nippers to uh, spur nippers to get things off of the spurs. Um, two sets of tweezers. One is the clamping tweezer, which I may or may not use. It depends. Um, the other is the regular tweezers, which I more than likely will use. It depends upon how well you f which one you feel most comfortable with using. A um, couple of different types of sanding sticks, and I do recommend the sanding sticks. Um, but in some cases, you may just you be able to use sanding paper, which is fine. Your basic knife set of your regular angled and a good chisel knife. The reason I like these chisels because you can get really nice straight cuts on them um, in a downward and whatever you can't get off of the spur with the spur cutters, you can really do a good job with the chisel knife. So the chisel knife is um, becoming one of my more favorite knives to use. Okay, you're actually going to, it'll be easiest if you have a chopper for this. Um, and I'll tell you why. The other thing that you're actually going to need is a miter box and saw. There is a reason why we can't use the chopper for everything that we're doing. The other thing that you want is a good plastic glue. Now, um, I know Vinny uses the Model Master glue. That's fine. I use the Faller Expert glue. But you want something that's a little bit more liquid and gives you a little bit of time to work with. I guess the CA glue would be fine. Um, it's not necessarily always the best thing that you want, but you also don't want the thin glue, which I usually like to work with. Another thing that is really, really useful to have on this one, this is not, this is a cutting top, but this is actually a glass cutting top. In this particular build, we're not going to be, if you notice, I don't have any clamps here. There's a reason for that. Most of the stuff that goes on there is going to be held in place with the glue during the time that it's built. The problem is, in order to get some of the things on there, you want to actually have the glass surface because the glass surface doesn't hold on the glue as much. So we're going to be kind of doing some trust gluing. So a good glass surface for this particular project is a good thing to have. Okay, so now let's look at the items that we're going to actually use to construct what we're going to do, to construct our actual conveyor belt. I will put a list of these um, with their numbers and so forth in the description block um, so you'll be able to see them all. There's one thing that I don't have a good description of um, and I'll tell you what that is. I'll find it and I'll actually put it in the description blocks. Okay, so first off, let's look at all the Plastistruct stuff that we're going to use. I went with Plastistruct due to the fact that they have everything that I need. Um, Evergreen Models, unfortunately, doesn't quite have all of the shapes that you'll need for this particular build. All right, so the first thing we're going to start off with, the actual conveyor belt itself, right? This is the Plastistruck, I'm oh, sorry, turn it this way, 
the Plastistruck 3 8 inch tubing. So this is 3 8 by 1 quarter inch tubing. All right, it's just a single plastic tube, but that's about that big. Okay. Um, this is about 15 and a half inches long. So this is our major portion that we're gonna use, uh, is the tubing. The next tubing that we use is another Plastistruck item. I said all of these are gonna be Plastistruck. Um, and this is the quarter inch by 3 16 inch tubing. Now this tubing is a little bit smaller. We use it for a couple of different things. Uh, mostly it's gonna be used for the downspouts or, or the feeder spouts on either side. Uh, the undercarriage is going to also be plaster struck. This is one of the things you can't get from Evergreen, which is the styrene trusses. This is 1 8 inch styrene trusses. Okay, so you can see here, um, they're nice and small. Uh, they just need a little bit of cleanup. There's not much cleanup to do on these, which is nice. The other thing that I got, because I don't get enough of the handrails and all that, um, is the HO scale handrails in styrene. All right, again, um, I don't think Evergreen has these, so that's why I've got Plastistruck. So you can tell that these are only six inches as well. Let me see if I can show you this. Yeah, these are only six inches long. So you have to get the amount of these that you need based on how long of an area you think you're gonna have to go through, all right? Last thing that you need, which is a detail that you don't see, but it's actually kind of important for a couple of, um, not only for aesthetics, but it also keeps your, your system straight all the way down, are these styrene channels. It doesn't look like they do too much holding, but they will actually do some holding between the web beams. Okay, now the next items we need to have. This is the important one. <laughs> this is the Titchy Trains open grate um, platforms with handrails. These are only three and a quarter inches long. You can see the platform down here. Um, but it comes with a platform, a set of handrails, and a set of end rails. Okay, so this is meant to be stuck on one side. It's not meant as a bridge type platform because it doesn't have two sets of handrails. But you only get two platforms per package, so you wind up with a lot of different packages. Now, you could do some other types of decking if you wanted to just use Plastistruck and just do diamond deck or something like that. But if you think about it, when you're outside in the rain and all, you really want water to just go flowing through your great systems and all that. If not, you, you know, you're going to have water puddling up and then you'll have rust and it'll also make a slippery um, area to walk on. Okay, but this is one of the most important things to have. And these are kind of fun to work with, but they're super highly detailed. Another thing that we may or may not use, depending upon um, where we're going to be at, is this uh, Titchy Train safety cage ladder. Now, the cool thing about this safety cage ladder, um, although it's only, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, it's about four and a half inches tall, um, it has a really great safety cage and a great ladder for the standoff. It also comes with these set of stairs and a couple of little lights in this packet. And you can also see that it has the end staircase. Um, again, um, it has a closed end and an open end for the staircase to come up to. And it has comes with a nice little staircase, okay? Um, I have not used this yet, but I, I might use this on this one. There's another item that I'm waiting for that's coming, which is an actual, which is actual platforms. But this is a fire escape platform. So the nice thing about that is you can see that it's already got a cutout in it. It's already all graded. Um, it does have its own uh, ladder system, well, sorry, its own railing system around it, but it also has these nice little angled uh, standoffs, which could come in useful in some cases, and it's got ladders. So this may be used in conjunction with this to make different platforms and all. I haven't decided yet, but it's a good thing to have around. Titchy Group also has a platform set, which hopefully I'll be able to uh, show you guys that before I, before I publish this. Um, and we'll put that on there. Another thing that I'm using um, is the Rick's grain bin parts. Now, considering you've built some grain bins, you may not need this particular thing because the grain bins do come with these parts in the end. Now, the biggest thing that you need from this isn't any of these items and all that. It's this item right here. It's a motor. So you're actually going to need a motor to drive your 
uh, conveyor belt. Now the good thing is, here's something else that actually has to happen that will go on. I am going to use the same uh, types of conveyors on the ground. And so this is your outlet for the ground section. So you'll attach this section to the tank and then this rounder blower here will actually attach to the conveyor. So that will actually take items from the bottom of the grain bin and put it into another conveyor belt. And this conveyor belt is just gonna go on the ground. This is gonna be a lot easier to build because it's just gonna have ground components. It doesn't need handrails or anything like that. The other thing is, is you could also make this and then put an angled section on it so it goes under the ground and then it runs along underneath the ground to do that. So again, these come with grain bins. If you buy Rick's grain bins, nothing comes with the, uh, um, the Walters grain bins as accessories. So if you, if you just get Walters grain bins, they don't even come with doors. So this would be a good set to have so that you could actually finish off your Walters grain bin as well. All right. Um, the last thing that I have, and I don't have the package for it right now, but this is also out of Titchy trains. And this is their miscellaneous electrical boxes. So what I have done is I have used uh, the number nine boxes is what I've cut away um, on this. And I'm only using half of it. The reason I'm only using half because I don't need a back end. Um, this is what I'm actually using right here. So I'm only using half of it. And I'm using that as the control station and small motor which would drive probably a worm gear to move the panel that accesses the dump area back and forth. So that's what we use this for. Um, it's just a nice little detail to put on there. So those are going to be the basic things that we make everything out of. You may occasionally need another piece of plastic or another piece of styrene for some strength or something. I actually had to use some angle irons um, to add on the extra uh, styrene truss that I needed on the other build. So, um, so that's what we're gonna do. Um, there's a couple of things that we need to do. We need to cut things off the of spurs. We need to cut these to size and all that. I'm not gonna bore you with most of those things, um, except to tell you there was a reason why we have this, okay? This is going to be used to cut the tubing. The reason is you can't use the chopper on the tubing. You, the chopper will cut through this tubing. However, the chopper uses force to cut through things. So as you press down on it, it will crush it. It's a lot easier to put this into the miter saw to get a nice square cut and then you just cut it with the miter saw nice and gently. Those razor miter saws will go right through this. Everything else you can cut with either a regular knife or you can use the chopper. But these tubes, because they're so thin walled, um, they tend to crush if you use the chopper. Okay, um, everything else is just gonna be easily set up and I'll tell you some of the things that I did. I won't, like I said, I won't necessarily bore you with chopping up a bunch of things. So let's get on with the build. Okay, those are all the parts and materials that you're gonna to need to make this build. Now, our next, the next video that we're gonna put out, which is gonna be really shortly, um, will be how we're gonna start preparing to do the build and how we get it all set up. Okay, so thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next part coming out really soon. Thanks everybody.